Uh, we've already defined this term, this is systole, and this is related to the period of contraction of the heart. We also have diastole, which is the period of relaxation of the heart. And one of the things that we talked about when we talked about the heart physiology is the fact that we first have the electrical events of the heart, which is basically going to be depolarization and repolarization. Um, and they are going to lead to the mechanical events of the heart. And mechanical events meaning um, systole, so contraction of the heart, and then um, diastole, the relaxation of the heart. Okay, so we have to have the electrical signals first because they provide the signal for the mechanical events to happen. When we talk about a cardiac cycle, a cardiac cycle means all the events that happen in one heartbeat. And so one heartbeat is going to consist of atrial, systole, followed by atrial diastole, and ventricular systole, followed by ventricular diastole. Okay, Realizing that we have the electrical events that are going to happen before these mechanical events happen. But we have kind of contraction, you know, we could kind of draw out the heart here, and here's our four chambers. So our two, you know, atria at the top, ventricles at the bottom, and we're going to have basically a top-down type of contraction. So atria are going to contract first and then relax, and then we've got um, ventricles that are going to contract second. And that's um, the events that are going to happen in a cardiac cycle. So here's that um, table, we've talked about this before, um, and so correlating electrical and mechanical events in the heart to um, deflections on the ECG. Okay. Now, cardiac cycle does involve repetitive changes in pressure and blood volume in the heart, and we're going to talk about that, but that's basically what we're With a heart rate of 75 beats per minute, which is pretty typical, the cardiac cycle lasts about 0.8 seconds. Okay, so each um, cardiac cycle is going to last 0.8 seconds. Now, it's important to remember that blood always flows from areas of high pressure to low pressure. So blood is always going to go from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. And it does this both in the heart as well as in the circulatory pathway uh, throughout the body. So how does blood flow through the heart? Blood flow is determined by pressure changes. This is what we just talked about. So when we contract chambers of our heart, it's going to generate increased pressure in that chamber. Okay. So when a, when a chamber is contracting, the pressure is going to increase. When a chamber is relaxing, the pressure is going to decrease. And so we have these kind of cyclic changes in pressure that allow blood to flow in one direction. It's going to push the blood um, in one direction. And also the fact that blood flows down its pressure gradient. Blood is always going to flow from an area of high pressure down its pressure gradient to an area of low pressure. Okay, so we have different phases of the cardiac cycle that we can talk about. And the first phase, kind of where we start, is called ventricular filling. And so this is a period of diastole, meaning that the heart is resting, it's relaxing, and therefore pressure is low. So we're going to have decreased pressure. And at this point, we've got blood returning to the atria from both the body and the lungs. So blood is returning from the um, superior and inferior vena cava flowing into the right atrium, and blood is returning to the heart through the um, pulmonary veins into the left atrium. 
Now, since the heart is relaxed, since we are in diastole, the ventricles are in diastole, typically when we say the heart is in diastole or the heart is in systole, we're referring to the ventricles, okay? So unless otherwise um, indicated, it's basically the ventricles. So the heart is relaxed. And what's happening is that the AV valves are hanging open passively because that's kind of their default position. And so blood is flowing um, into the atria, into the right atrium and the left atrium, and is flowing right down into the ventricles. It just doesn't even stop in the atria. It just comes right on down into the ventricles. And about 80% of the blood returning to the heart just dumps right down into the ventricles. Okay. At this point, our semilunar valves are closed because one of the things that you're going to see is kind of this alternating pattern between AV valves and semilunar valves. Um, and you should treat the AV valves really as a pair because they, they pretty much act together and the semilunar valves act together as well. But if the AV valves are open, as in this case, the semilunar valves are going to be closed. And then we see the opposite is true coming up. When the semilunar valves are open, the AV valves are gonna close. Because if we had both valves open, then blood could go from ventricle back into the atrium, and then blood could go from ventricle into the pulmonary trunk. It's got two different directions it could go, and that's, that's not efficient. We wanna continue with one-way blood flow. Now, um, the second part of phase two is going to be atrial systole. So we know that the atria contract first. So we have contraction in the atria, and um, this is being stimulated by atrial depolarization. So what's happening electrical, electrically? Well, we know we have the atria that are depolarizing. We have that wave of depolarization spreading from SA node throughout the atria um, down to AV node. Um, the atria are going to contract, so we are now in atrial systole. The pressure in the atria is going to increase, and that's going to push the last 20% of blood from the atria down into the ventricles. Okay. Now, the ventricles have filled with blood, and this is about as full as they're going to get at this point. And so we have a name for this. This is called the end diastolic volume. So this is um, how much blood is in the ventricles at the end of diastole. Okay, phase two. This is going to be ventricular systole. So now we're going to have the ventricles contract. Our atria are still relaxing. Our ventricles have had a wave of depolarization spread through them which is going to lead to the ventricles contracting. So now we're in ventricular systole. This causes the pressure to build up in the ventricles, okay, because contraction means increasing pressure. And as a result, we end up with closure of the atrioventricular valves. So the papillary muscles are going to contract, and the chordae tendinae, those heartstrings, are going to become very, very taut, okay? And I always kind of give the example, I have a dog um, who's not super great at walking on a leash, and I'm always having to kind of hold him back when we take him for walks. So basically, I'm the papillary muscle here, his leash is the chordae tendinae, and my dog is the valve with the pressure of the ventricle pushing up against it. So what the valves want to do against all that pressure is evert into the atria, and that would allow blood to flow back up into the atria. But we don't want that to happen, so we end up with these really taut chordae tendinae, and they um, are held tight with contracting the papillary muscles so that the valves stay closed against the pressure. So the cord this is kind of an important point here. Chordae tendinae don't close valves, okay? They don't pull the valves closed. 
what they do is they hold the valves um, or they prevent the valves from everting everting into the atria under the pressure of the um, ventricular systole. Okay, so what we have first, kind of the first um, subphase of this ventricular systole is going to be an isovolumetric phase. And what happens here is we actually have a very short period of time where we have um, AV valves that have closed and semilunar valves that have not yet opened. Okay, so these guys would still be closed. Isovolumetric, meaning we're building up pressure, but the volume actually hasn't changed yet. Blood hasn't gone anywhere yet. Now, the second part of this is going to be the ejection phase. And what happens here is um, pressure in the ventricles build up to the point where it pushes the semilunar valves open. And so now we have movement. So we've got movement from the right ventricle into the pulmonary trunk. We've got movement from left ventricle into aorta. And the blood starts to leave. Um, if you notice here, we've got um, AV valves closed, right? And semilunar valves open. So again, we've kind of got that opposite thing going on here where the valves act as pairs. So they do the same thing together, but the AV valves do something opposite from what the semilunar valves are doing. So generally, you can know that when the AV valves are closed, the semilunar valves are going to be open. And when the sem semilunar valves are open, the AV valves are going to be closed, just like we saw previously. So um, we have increase in pressure in the ventricles. Blood is now going to flow into pulmonary trunk, into the lungs and then blood from the left ventricle is gonna float into aorta and then out to the body during the ejection phase. Okay, so now we've got phase three. Here is our early ventricular diastole. So the ventricles have contracted and now they are going to start relaxing. We have a tiny little bit of blood is left in the ventricles. We're not completely 100% efficient. So most of the blood makes its way out okay but but not but not all of it so not a hundred percent so we see just a small amount of blood that's left um, in the ventricles and that's kind of indicated here and here and this is going to be our end systolic volume so the, the amount of blood that's left in the ventricles after systole now at this point ventricles are relaxing so we're in ventricular diastole. And because we're in diastole, our pressure is decreasing. So we're going to have decreased pressure. So what we see at this point is that the blood has moved into pulmonary trunk and aorta. So the pressure in those vessels has actually increased above the pressure in the ventricles. So here we have decreased pressure and decreased pressure. And this difference in pressure causes the semilunar valves to close. And this prevents blood from going back down into the ventricles. Because again, we want to keep this one-way blood flow. So the pressure um, increase in the pulmonary trunk and aorta is going to push back against those semilunar valves. They're going to close and prevent blood from going back down into the ventricles. So during this time, the atria have been in diastole. The whole time the ventricles have been contracting, the atria have been relaxing. So since they've been relaxing, we've had them filling with blood through superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Okay? So when the pressure in the atria increases to a point where it's able to push the AV valves open, then the AV valves are gonna open and blood is gonna start flowing from atria down into ventricles. And we start it all over again. We go back down, we go back to phase one. Okay, and so this is what it looks like, just kind of putting it all together um, with the heart. It's important to realize that events are happening on the right side and the left side of the heart together. Um, 
another important thing too, we've talked about this before with the left um, ventricle um, myocardium being thicker, you know, that's one of the adaptations that we've seen mainly because it generates increased pressure on that left side. It pumps against a greater resistance. Okay, these are the reasons why that myocardium is thicker. It is not thicker because the left ventricle pumps more blood. This doesn't happen. So both ventricles pump the same amount of blood. Okay, that is important to remember. We've got the same amount of blood coming in to both of them. So, okay, video talking about pressure changes in the heart. Um, and then we can correlate what's happening in the heart with um, the creation of heart sounds. And so we hear these sounds um, because of the heart valves closing. Okay, when the heart valves close, they basically slam shut and they create a sound. And we describe these as lub-dub or lub-dup type of sound. Um, the first heart sound is called S1, and that's the sound that's made by the AV valves closing. Okay, so when does that happen? Well, that's going to happen um, here when we have ventricular systole and the pressure increases here and slams those valves closed. So here we created our S1 heart sound with AV valves closing. Our S2 heart sound is the sound of the semilunar valves closing. They close together, basically, for our purposes, they are all closing together. AV valves close together, semilunar valves close together. Um, so the S2 heart sound is created when the semilunar valves close. So when does that happen? That's going to happen here, after we've had um, ventricular systole and we've pushed blood into the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Pressure has built up in the vessels above what's in the ventricle and the semilunar valves slam shut to prevent backflow of blood into the ventricles. There is your S2 heart sound. Okay, listening to heart sounds is something that we can do using a stethoscope and we call that auscultating. So you can auscultate heart sounds. Um, there are different places where you can listen to them. So you can identify all four different valves and this is what happens when you um, go to see a um, medical professional and they are listening to your heart sounds in different locations. They are assessing um, the various valves. Um, again, the lub is going to be the AV valves closing and this is the S1 heart sound. This happens when the pressure in the ventricles increases greater than the pressure in the atria and the AV valves slam shut. The dub sound is going to be our S2 heart sound, and this is what we hear when the semilunar valves close. Again, the pressure in the aorta and pulmonary trunk increases greater than the pressure in the ventricles, which causes the semilunar valves to close to prevent blood from going back into the ventricles. And this happens at the beginning of ventricular diastole because the ventricle is relaxing. Okay, then we're gonna have a slight pause and then the cardiac cycle starts all over again. And we kind of start, you know, right back up at the beginning. So we typically hear lub-dub with a little pause and then lub-dub, pause, okay? So that's how that, that's gonna roll. This is, um, this is kind of correlating pressure changes with ECG and then here's our heart sounds. So here's our pressure changes. When we, this is ventricular, so pressure change in ventricle. During ventricular systole, we know that the pressure is going to increase. And when the pressure increases, that's happening associated with the QRS complex, okay? Because that's going to be ventricular 
um, depolarization followed by ventricular systole. Once the pressure in the ventricles increases above the pressure in the atria, those AV valves are going to slam shut and we're going to hear our S1 heart sound. So S1 heart sound is going to occur just after the QRS complex. Okay. Then we have ventricular diastole. Okay, Ventricles are going to start relaxing and with that relaxation we see a decrease in pressure. Okay, This is happening associated with the T wave because with the T wave we have ventricular repolarization um, and at the same time or shortly after that we have ventricular diastole. Ventricles are relaxing. Once the pressure in the ventricles decreases down below the pressure in the atria, I'm sorry, in the aorta and pulmonary trunk, the semilunar valves are going to close. And that's going to create our S2 heart sound. Okay, so the S2 heart sound is going to happen right about the time of the T wave. Okay. Sometimes we have heart murmurs. Um, you may have a heart murmur. You may know someone else who has a heart murmur. This is basically sound that's created when blood does not flow smoothly. So when we have turbulent blood flow, you can hear that in a stethoscope. So there are lots of types of murmurs. There are some murmurs that involve problems with valves. If you have an incompetent valve, it means that the valve doesn't close completely and it's going to let blood backflow. Okay, and that's going to create a sound. We also have what's called stenotic valves, and these are going to be kind of, um, typically your valves are pretty flexible. As we get older, um, the valves become less flexible, and sometimes they don't open completely. And so now we have blood that's trying to flow through a smaller um, opening, basically, and that's also going to create turbulence. So when we hear that turbulence, um, that's what we see. This is um, a common murmur called the mitral valve prolapse, and basically this is because of an incompetent mitral valve. Um, mitral valve is going to be the left um, AV valve, and there are times and in some patients where that valve doesn't close completely. So when we have um, ventricular um, systole and the blood is supposed to go out through aorta, well, some blood ends up um, going back up into the left atrium. So this is fairly common. It's not um, necessarily life-threatening, um, but it's something that um, can happen um, as you get older. It's definitely more common that we have a little bit of backflow of blood into the, to the atrium. Okay? And this is showing you um, normal aortic valve, and then this would be an aortic valve stenosis. And you can see, you know, the aortic valve becomes less flexible, it's less mobile, it's not able to open. So now we're pushing blood through a much, you know, smaller area than we were here. It can create noise. Um, and then there are times too where that valve won't close completely, again, because it's lost some flexibility. They can go in and do heart valve replacements. This is a pretty common um, procedure that's done these days. Um, they can do a replacement with a biological valve. They can even use like a pig valve, um, or they can use mechanical valves um, to replace heart valves. And this is just, I just included some images of um, prosthetic heart valves where they go in, um, and then the different types of surgical cuts that they sometimes have to make depending on what type of surgery they're doing.